welcome to an episode of Blooms for You. Thank you so very much for being here together with me and cousin It, who is actually looking quite fabulous still to this day. I feel like I can whoop his nose there. <laughs> I chose another angle for him. I normally see him when I walk to him, but more from the right side. There's so much reflection from this gorgeous sunshine. I'm not complaining. So I figured instead of his sunglasses reflecting so much light, look at him from this angle. And he is still quite remarkable and fabulous, if I don't say so myself. If he could nod, he would agree right now. I think he enjoys the angle this time around. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for taking the time to come and have a look-see at what has opened in the recent weeks and whose names have come up in the dedication to personally say thank you for being so supportive on my channel. Everybody that is not named here today, I dedicate Cousin It and all his blooms to all of you watching today, tomorrow, six months down the line or whenever. Your time is appreciated, but this is going to be kind of a longish episode unless my editing skills <laughs> are such that I can narrow things down a little bit. A lot of beautiful, beautiful blooms have opened and I do ramble on a little bit in these clips because my goodness, the stress to get them to bloom was second to none. So let's move on and let's have a look see. And here we have a stunner, one of the most incredible, remarkable, beautiful, outstanding orchids in my collection. Happy to say that Fred Clark Yara After Dark Black Pearl is back, but let me tell you something. If it wasn't for the striking color of this orchid and the color of the blooms were something that were not to my liking, the fragrance would make this a keeper all the time, every time, any time. Before I get into that though, I have 30 some blooms here. I'm 10 less than last year, but that's okay. <laughs> They're here and these I'm going to dedicate to always something, W501SR. Manang in Germany, Wendy Lagoon, Natalie Zadrozna, The Jude 17021, Hantrog Hoa 4, Hoa La, Zana Atanasova, Travelogs by G. I have 10 people in total to thank and dedicate my After Dark Black Pearl to, to say thank you very, very much for your support on my channel, for making this possible. And I am really, really happy that I can actually make this dedication to you because the spikes of this orchid started to develop just at the point when I had to bring her in. And it was a very nerve wracking few months until we've come to this point. The fragrance, let me get to that. Oh my goodness. It's a fragrance you think you never forget until such a time that you smell it again and you go, oh, I had forgotten how good it is. The spicy ginger and cinnamon. It's a big red, but more on the medicinal side, not as a big red would be right out of the package. It is more medicinal, but not unpleasant in the least. It fills the room, it is delicious. It makes for a wonderful, wonderful work environment because currently this orchid lives inside in my grow space and it just packs a punch. Now, since I've had her out here in the sun setting up for the filming, the whole patio smells of this orchid as well. So it's not that she will only have a fragrance in the sunshine. This one just smells gorgeous from the moment that it's daylight all the way to late afternoon. In tense to say the least. Now I have been adding footage of this orchid in between what you're seeing when I fill in the blanks because it is so, so difficult for me to document the beauty and the intricacy of the blooms. And for that reason, I'm gonna just take advantage of editing and bring in the shots to get you closer to the bloom. Because you can see that the second spike is poking out to the right here, and yet you can hardly see the blooms. A studio would be nice, but that is not my reality. So the stills and the editing will have to take care of that to get you in there. Even what I had forgotten, maybe I didn't even notice that last year because I was so blown away by this orchid, that the lip has little like white spots, little striations to get whatever pollinator should pollinate this orchid into the depths of that bloom. And then 
when the pollinia and the column glow a little bit reddish, it's like haunted little eyes, beady little eyes staring at you. Absolutely incredible. The spike now has been open for about, let me guess, 10 days and you can see that not all the blooms are open fully. That's okay, I like it that way. At least everything else looks fresh and nice. I have a bit of a concern with the bend of the spike here, but it doesn't look like there's a problem. It's just the weight of the blooms. Another spike here on the right didn't quite make it all the way over. I had some bud blast right in the initial stages of that spike, but just to have this many blooms make it considering the circumstances, having to develop indoors. Yes, I can't be more pleased to be able to dedicate these blooms to always something. W501SR, Manang in Germany, Wendy Lagoon, Natalie Zadrozna, The Jude 17021, Pantrog Hoa 4, Hoa La, Zana Atanasova, and Travelogs by G. My Fred Clackyara After Dark Black Pearl, she blooms for all of you to say thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. I cannot be more grateful that we get to see the blooms again this year. I cannot tell you how grateful I am. So thank you to all of you. Really appreciate you. And I hope that you're doing well in your part of the world. Keeping with the theme of how complicated it is to film catacetinae blooms, especially if they are going left and right and they're not all facing us at the same time, I'm going to dedicate the Jack of Diamond blooms to Amaritza Quemada, Raf, Si, Tu, Ai, in Madrid, Himalaya, Solokumbu, Nepal, Organic Yard, and TNT Neha. These blooms, they bloom for you as well to say thank you so much for your support on my channel. These blooms also I am very, very grateful for, just like with the Fred Clark Yara because they live next to each other. So I had four spikes to weave my way around, make sure I don't snap anything. And we've come to the point where I can dedicate the first male blooms of my Jack of Diamonds to you because Last year, I broke the spike. So yeah, I had a bit of panic stations with four going on <laughs> at the same time. But here they are, and I am also interspersing footage because it is very, very difficult to move this orchid around. And as you can see, the presentation, the blooms have gone everywhere, even though their light source was a single side. Needless to say, moving this one around is a bit more of a delicate act because of the pollinia, it ejects very, very quickly. They're super, super sensitive with the hairs. And even if you don't touch them, they dislodge themselves. And then the male blooms start to collapse relatively quickly, which is a shame after waiting three years to see the male blooms. But here's a picture as well when I had just put the orchid back on her shelf and boom, the pot had the pollinia on it. Yeah. Oh, well, never mind. Small details, but I am fortunate to be able to dedicate these mayo blooms to you, Amaritza Quemada, Raf Ai in Madrid, Himalaya, Solokumbu, Nepal, Organic Yard, and TNT Neha. At least I've got them. And let me tell you a little bit about the fragrance of this one. It is the best spearmint smell ever. Sugary spearmint chewing gum. I used to have a brand in Kenya that was always at the cash register. The yellow ones were the juicy fruit and the white pack was the spearmint. And that is exactly what this one smells like. Just delicious. Now, seeing as this one also lives next to the After Dark Black Pearl, I can tell you the After Dark Black Pearl is much, much more potent. This one, you have to understand what you're smelling if you can move away from the incredible fragrance of the Black Pearl. This one, the spearmint in its own right, would be powerful if the neighbor wasn't even more so. So the two of them, they pack a punch in my grow room at the moment. You could say I'm currently in catacetinae heaven. <laughs> so thank you so much, Amaritza Quemada, Raf, ahí in Madrid. Himalaya Solokumbu, Nepal, Organic Yard, TNT Neha. My Catacetum Jack of Diamonds, male blooms. They bloom for you. Thank you so much for your support.
Schmel Leip. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Let's give these little Tolumnia golden fire blooms the right sunlight to give their name a purpose. Golden fire, late, late afternoon sun. I thought this just really made this little cluster pop in the colors that are just so remarkable. They are true to the naked eye. Little bit late in the season. This one is now blooming on its third cluster of branched blooms here. So I wanted to dedicate them to you, Schmel Leip, to say thank you so much for your support on my channel. Very surprised to see these blooms, but very grateful. Now, I like this little positioning because especially the yellow tolumnias. I love giraffes. They're sort of my spirit animal, but look at the back of this one. You see this one we see from behind. This reminds me of the back of a giraffe. The ears with the speckles, you know, that flicker away the flies. And then, well, we only have one little horn there, but when I see this, especially on these yellow ones, oh, they remind me of little giraffes. And I just wanted to position her this way because I've never ever talked about what I see when I see them from behind. I always look at Tolumnia blooms from the front in the viewfinder. So yeah, this gives me the opportunity with the sunlight to give a little bit of a semblance of little giraffes. They are so cute. Of course, there is no fragrance, but my goodness, so charming, so rewarding, cluster after cluster to bloom. Really, really, with the afternoon sun, just makes me so happy. And Schmör Leib, I hope that you like little Tolumnia blooms. And seeing as you're down there in the boondoos of South Africa, I wanted to correlate a little bit that gorgeous color, the sunsets in the African skies, plus, plus my little connection with a giraffe. So Yashma Leib, thank you so much for your support on my channel. I hope that your Phalaenopsis Bellina is doing well. If you ever see this video, please let me know in the comments how she is doing. Meanwhile, know that I have clusters of blooms that when I look at them, I don't only see giraffes, but I think of you as well and say once again, thank you so much for your support. This is a first time bloomer in my collection. This is Paphiopedalum mint chocolate. In the late afternoon sun, looks a little bit yellow, but I did want to show her in a little bit of sunshine. We will take her now to the shade because the yellow is misleading. See what I mean? <laughs> that yellow is misleading. And I've had to face her also away from the white reflection of the facade because her colors were washing out even in the shade. But here she is, first time bloomer, mint chocolate. Very happy to dedicate this bloom to Tai Ling to say thank you to you very much for your support on my channel as well. She is quite, quite cute. I was expecting a little bit more depth in color, a darker chartreuse than you can see here on the sepal above. But every other attribute is quite cute. Now, you can see how the pouch is also getting the reflection from the facade. You know, washes out a little bit. But she presents herself quite beautifully. I did have to support the spike a little bit because of where the light was coming from. So she is actually bent over more than what you can see. But for the sake of filming, I think this is a better presentation and you get a pretty good idea about the bloom. Let's move a little bit more to the left. Ooh, yeah. Again, I was expecting some darker colors, but you know, as a first time bloomer, I am not too disappointed. It has taken me three and a half years to get to this point. <laughs> I do sincerely now hope though that she will be a year on year bloomer for me because the next fan is coming on quite, quite nicely. So now we are on our way. She has acclimated and from now on, I am anticipating, if nothing else goes wrong, that mint chocolate will be around year after year. No fragrance on her whatsoever, but a beautiful little delicate addition to my collection. There we go. Not that big a bloom either. Considering you've been waiting for so long to get a bloom coming, the initial impact is a little bit like, oh, really? That's what you've got for me? And then after a while, you think, well, hey, at least that is what you've got for me. So, Tai Ling, 
my little Paphiopetalum mint chocolate bloom. She blooms for you to say thank you very much once again for your support on my channel. By the way, this bloom has been open now for about eight days. So we'll see how long she lasts. She's still looking as fresh as she did on day two. It took her quite a while to open her bud, about four days to completely open. So full maturity of the bloom is four days, total eight days from when she started to open. Anywho, I babble because I'm excited to see this little one and Tai Ling. This one blooms for you. Thank you so very, very much for your support. Twenty twenty two starts off with the reverse of twenty twenty one. In twenty twenty one, I used to moan about the fact that oh, my orchids are late. <laughs> well, here we are in January of twenty twenty two, and my Dendrobium tetragonum variety giganteum is in bloom. This is a first. Usually, this one starts to bloom around March. Then I have a second flush around May, and then you know the growth starts. But here we are. This is making me hopeful. I'll tell you why. But anyway, first of all, it's me, Chris, and Zahabat YouTuber. Dendrobium tetragonum variety giganteum. I have four blooms, even though this is a beautiful cluster of spidery nonsense at this point in time, with three, and there's one in the background. We'll get to that. I still have three more to go. Now, I'm a little bit hesitant to wait any longer because I would have liked to have seen these buds bloom out and then do the dedication. However, I have a feeling that maybe this time of year, seeing as it's the first time that these are blooming, I have to make very, very sure that I keep the blooms, otherwise we may miss out. So I'm taking advantage of it now and we'll get to the other three buds at a later stage when they open. So yes, surprise, January. This is making me hopeful because in the past two years, I've only ever gotten a single growth out of my tetragonum. And I used to get two growths every year. Now, granted, the new growths are much, much bigger than anything I've ever grown before. So I'll forgive the orchid for that. Still, if this is happening in January and if she is true to what she normally does, that she will have another flush of blooms eight weeks after the first flush, that will bring us to March. And then we are already two months ahead when she starts with her new growth. So, <laughs> yes, I'm hopeful and I hope my anticipation, I will not get disappointed by, oh, we've got another new growth anyway. Also, for the first time, I don't have her fragrance, so that is new to me as well. Usually, she has a very, very metallic fragrance that has a note of jasmine in the background. It is sweet, but there's a metallic, acrid smell to it. I don't have that with this blooming, so maybe because the temperatures are not warm enough. But still, these blooms, wow. They are so undendrobium like in my opinion. You have a frilly lip, you have spidery nonsense going on as if it were a brassia. You've got markings, it's just incredible. They are also a little bit more bunched up than they normally would be, which is a shame, so the presentation isn't as open. But I do find the fact that they are a little bit squashed up makes the cluster look much more remarkable in its own right, because you see a single bloom here, See if I can get that close and keep it focused. Still super, super interesting. Very difficult to keep her straight, even though it's not windy today. So that's not the excuse. She is just not exactly one of those mega stable orchids, as you can see, very, very thin base. Super interesting though. I love this orchid. And the fact that the growth from last year is already coming out with three buds. And you see the next blooming is already in place. So she'll be around for a little while. But again, I do not want to risk the blooms fading out on me. So it's me, Chris, and Sahabat YouTuber. This cluster of blooms, plus the one in the back there, I dedicate them to you to say thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. And I'm super excited to see what this orchid does this year, seeing as she's already in bloom. Surprise! Anyway, it's me, Chris, Sahabat YouTuber. Thank you. Thank you so much.
What a relief. <laughs> Dendrobium napert's Alex Poli, second spike has opened up with absolutely no issues. And I say what a relief because it lived right next door to where I was hoping my pastoral innocence would start blooming out. Those buds blasted and this one made it. So here we are, yin and yang. I've got my second spike of Dendrobium napert's Alex Poli open and I would like to dedicate these blooms to Ren, X and AJ. Por fin, very happy. As these blooms are super long lasting, I didn't exactly rush into filming them. We've had some pretty gloomy days and I was hoping that maybe the sun would come out at some point because I got myself some very, very pretty footage for these blooms, which are quite difficult to film as they normally hang down. Let's see if I can turn this guy around. You see? but also because of the way they opened up and how I trained the spikes, I see them by looking up at them. So that works well, but for filming, you can see that I have used my support, which I normally don't need at all for the entire orchid as such, but for eventualities like this, it works perfectly. I can just string a little bit of wire, make a little hook, and the whole spike presents itself quite nicely. Especially for bloom dedications, it is nice to be able to see the blooms properly whenever possible. And putting shade on them is not exactly the plan. But these funky blooms definitely are adding interest into my grow space at the moment. And yes, <clears throat> the fragrance is still the same as the last time. The blue stone that you put into your toilet bowl to keep it nice and fresh smelling. Well, let's just say nice is a matter of interpretation. Personally, I'm not a fan of those things, but back in the day, that is what we had available. And yes, that blue thing that smells quite, quite intense. That is the fragrance of this orchid. <laughs> but anyway, just in case you were interested to know if I had a fragrance. Oh, I love how they're looking in my viewfinder in this afternoon sun. Very cloudy day this morning. I didn't think I would get this clip in today, but oh yes, I love it. This is perfect. Money shot right here. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Even though the fragrance is a little bit exotic, let's just put it that way. <laughs> But Ren X and AJ, thank you to both of you so much for your support on my channel. Very, very much appreciated. I hope the content is still of interest and I look forward to seeing you. Whenever you comment again, know that you are so very much appreciated and my Dendrobium Neiferts Alex Poli blooms for you. And just a little bit of an add-on. Let me show you this. The second lead is starting on a new growth. So fertilization has begun. I do want to push that growth as best as I possibly can. So I'm not going to be holding back. There's 160 parts per million in there at the moment. Flushing happened today and 160 parts per million is going in. That just as a side note. Renex and AJ, thank you for your support on my channel. If you can see me in the reflection of his glasses, hi, <laughs> we're still here camping out on the west side of my patio. Cousin It was just mentioning to me that he would like to have something a little bit more according to standard and style, something classy instead of, <laughs> look at his skinny little legs, I'm sorry. <laughs> when you see him from the front, the stand underneath it really looks like he's on legs. If it wasn't for the egg crate I have to put underneath him so that he doesn't topple over in case it gets windy. But if you can think away that egg crate. <laughs> I'm sorry. I haven't actually ever noticed that it looks like little legs. <laughs> okay. Ooh, I'm going to be in so much trouble when he comes around, when he recognizes that I was actually laughing at him. Sorry, cousin, it, not laughing at you. Promise. I guess he was trying to say that he needs something a little bit more classy because 
I would eventually catch on. Who knows? Anyway, maybe I need to send Cousin It into therapy after this. <laughs> I just can't help myself. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I really appreciate you watching here. Oh, my face is hurting. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate your time. My goodness, with everything that we grow through with our orchids to get them to be happy. Gosh, a little bit of fun. Comic relief is sometimes much needed and very refreshing. And I hope you don't hold it against me that I was having. Well, still, I'm really trying to contain myself. A giggle fit. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. <laughs> And no, I'm not going to take this clip and start again. I'm going to leave it as it is. Ooh, my face. Please, that hurts a lot. <laughs> Have yourselves a beautiful day, of course, on one condition. That you stay safe and also much love from me and Cousin It. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Oh, dear, oh, dear. You crack me up.